Hey guys, Mitch here, uh, back with another tutorial on how to use VR on Unity 4. Um, this one's going to be on uh, interacting with objects in the world uh, using gaze-based interaction with the HMD. Um, it'll probably be in a couple of parts just because there's uh, multiple ways to do it and I'll just cover the most popular ones in this uh, video. So first things first, uh, what are we talking about when we say we want to find the um, what the user is looking at. So basically, if we have um, a player, say their head's there, they've got their HMD here, cool, just here, um, and say there's a cube out here, and we want to know, is the player looking at this cube? So how do we do that? Um, one way to do it is uh, called a trace or a um, raycast, where basically we have a start point and then we have an endpoint and we fire a line from the start point to this endpoint and we check uh, everything along this line until we hit something and say we hit this cube, then we know that the player is looking at this cube because it's uh, intersected with this line. Uh, so that's the first one we're going to look at. Um, there are a couple of ways to do that in UE4. So um, I have a, just a default scene set up here with a, um, a pawn and a game mode. So if we look inside here, we can just add what are called uh, traces in UE4. So there are a bunch of different traces we can do. Um, I'm just going to try and try and cover uh, two at the moment. So we've got a line trace by channel and a line trace by objects. And uh, basically it's a channel and an object type. So these are both collision responses. Um, so if I add just a new cube component, this is just a random cube, um, and go down here into the collision presets, we can see that if we go into custom, it has the collision responses, a trace response, and an object response. Um, so basically, this is what splits these two apart. So a trace by channel is looking directly at these um, traces, the responses here. I'm just compile that. Um, yeah. And then if we trace for objects, it's looking at these um, collision responses here. And so the other difference between these is this is like an or relationship, so we can have trace by visibility or camera. And this is an end, so it's an array. So we can trace by many different object types. So if I just make this array, we can do world static and world dynamic. Um, so those are the main two differences between those. Um, for this one, we'll just have to, we're just going to look at um, tracing by visibility so we don't have to worry about uh, occlusion problems and stuff like that. So what do we get? We get a start vector and an end vector. Vector. So what do we want these to be? Well, start's pretty obvious. We want the start to be this position right here. And the end, we want it to be this position right here. So that's cool. So how do we work those out? Well, the start is pretty easy. And um, I've just made a little helper function here to get the start position, so the world position of the HMD. Um, the reason why this has been um, abstracted out is because it depends on which uh, engine version you use, the, depending on what uh, the HMD world position is. So I'm pr going to make a separate video on um, how to do it in different engine versions, how to get the world position in different engine versions. Uh, so that's the start position, pretty easy. Um, and this end position, well, uh, that's a little bit trickier. So basically what we've got to look at is what do we have? What do we have available to us? We have this position and then we have the direction, this vector here, that the player is looking at. And so we want to get from this thing, from this direction here into this here. And so there are a couple of ways to do that. The easiest is um, pretty much just have this direction and you want to scale it up by the amount that you need to get this thing here. So say this direction is has a length of one because all directions in UE4 have a default length of one. 
and say this is actually a um, hundred or like a hundred unreal units away. So basically all we need to do is take this direction and then scale it up by a factor of a hundred to get it here. And so that's pretty easy to do in UE4. The other thing that we have to look at is this direction, I've kind of lied a bit by drawing it here. It's actually, when you get a direction, you can sort of think of it if I just draw an axis here. Uh, so we got an X here, a Z here, and a Y here. Um, all directions, you can think of them as being on the, or on the origin, just because a direction doesn't have a position, so it's not located in space, but it's um, instead located at the origin. We can think of it as being located at the origin. And so how do we get from a direction being here to where we want it here? Well, that's pretty easy. As you can see, like there's a difference of this position to this position. So if we just add this position here onto this, then it'll get us back here. And so I'll just show you what that looks like in code and hopefully make a bit more sense. So I've got a uh, another um, node here to get the direction that the player is looking, the forward vector. And then I want to multiply that. So multiply uh, by say 100. And so now here's the um, interaction is about one meter long. And then I want to add back in, if I just replace these for neatness, this position, and that gives me my endpoint, which is cool. Um, so this is basically the formula for doing any trace from the um, HMD position. Uh, so the next thing is how do we um, how do we say something is interactable? How do we tell the engine? what to do once we've hit this cube. So the first thing we should ask ourselves is what should the interactable object do? Um, so if I just uh, write some things, well, we want it to be able to detect, um, say, a hit. So when the player first looks at it, we want to be able to detect when the player stops looking at it and they start looking somewhere else. And we want to be able to detect when the player uh, does an action while looking at it. So say they're looking at it and they hit some activate button that we've set. Um, so those are the three things that we want to do. And basically what we could do is set up, say, a base class, call it, um, I don't know, interactable. And then this base class has, say, three functions that we call uh, like on focus, um, on blur, and on activate. And these um, will basically just call these functions whenever we need to for the um, player. Uh, the problem with this method is if we set up a base class like this and say we have uh, I don't know, a interactable cube that inherits it from it um, and say we want to have a interactable goblin that also inherits from it um, it limits our possibilities because say we also say this goblin sh should be as a base class of uh, let's say monster and this goblin is also needs to inherit from monster um, in blueprints uh, i don't believe we can have uh, uh, multi-inheritance so this relationship won't actually work so how you work around this and how java and other pro programming language languages that don't support um, multiple inheritance work around this is through an interface and interfaces is basically if we get this and instead of it being a class it is in fact an interface and basically an interface means it's a class but we promise or we can't put any um, variables 
just methods in there. So luckily, this is pretty much already an interface already. So it's got the perfect perfect solution for us, and that means it, this goblin can inherit from Monster, but then it can have an interface of interactable, and so this relationship now works. So how do we set that up in UE4? Um, if we scroll back, and if we look at it um, here, and go back, and just go uh, right-click anywhere in the content browser, um, blueprints, not sure if you can see that, I'll just try and move it up a bit. Uh, still doesn't help me that much. Anyway, uh, blueprint interface, I don't know if you could see that, but it's under the blueprints tab. Um, so here, uh, we've got a new interface now, I'm just going to call that uh, interactable interface here. I'm just going to set up the functions that we uh, had a look at before. So we want a on where, sorry, on where, uh, we want a on focus. And we want a on activate. So those are those three functions that um, we had back here. Now if we look back at this, we should compile that. And now uh, we can create our interactable thing. So if I just create a new uh, blueprint class from an actor, I'm just going to call this interactable cube. And now, the cool thing is, I can go into my class settings. I can tell it that it implements the interface of interactable. And now, this has those functions that we have seen before. So, I can create a node for on focus, add event on focus, and um, this little thing, this little icon here, says that it's from the interface. Um, so, on where? Cool. And now on activate. Oops. Cool. So now we got these three events that this uh, interactable cube implements. And now that it implements those, we can go back to our test form and go back. Uh, I'm just going to add a tick. Uh, you can do this on like a timer or whatever if you don't want it to do it every frame, but you might as well just do it every frame. Cool. Um, so this should work. I'm actually going to set this up to say 10,000, uh, 1,000, so 10 meters. And now. Uh, our out hit, which tells us what our trace hits. Uh, we can just break that out into, there's a lot here, but um, we just want to concern ourselves with what's the um, actor, what's the object we've actually hit. Um, so if I, the cool thing about the interface is now I can call that function on that actor. So say I want to do call the on focus. And this will send that to whatever actor we hit. And so the cool thing about the interface is um, we're going to hit, this trace will still hit a lot of things. So it'll hit uh, the ground or anything that's visible. But because we use an interface, um, it'll just uh, fail gracefully and won't actually uh, cause any errors if we try and call this on focus on something that doesn't implement that interface. Okay, so if we go back. And it's interactable cube, we should actually probably make it a cube. Here we go. Um, and then say on focus, I just want to print a string. Hello. Cool. I'm just going to chuck this in the world about here. Now we should be able to hit play and see it work. Yep. So hello, and then when I look away, it goes away and come back and it says hello, which is cool. If you want to um, debug a trace as well, you can just set its uh, debug draw. Uh, one frame is good if we're doing a tick because then we can just see what we're looking at. 
and now you can see uh, it might be hard but it's a red dot on where I'm looking at. Cool. Uh, so how do we set up the next little bit? So we're going on focus but now we want uh, it to call on blur when we're not looking at it. Uh, so that's pretty easy. So we can just uh, promote this to a variable and call it, um, let's say, uh, focused object. Don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I just called it focused object. Um, back here. And basically, we just want to set that here. And now, what we want to do is we want to grab this get actor. And then, if it doesn't equal our focused object, so we've looked at something and it's no longer what we looked at before, then we want to call on focus cool um, but we also want to before that we want to grab this focus object and we want to defocus uh, call. oh no it's blur sorry blur. so we want to grab our old object we want to blur it and then we want to focus on the new object which will be cool so if I go back and let's say we need we want to do something cooler with this cube so uh, instead of just printing something, I'm going to say on focus, let's uh, set the a material instance uh, value. Uh, set vector parameter value on material. That's what I want. So on the focus, um, I already know that default material has a color, sorry, a color parameter. I'm just going to set that to red, so RG, these are RGB values. Um, and then on blur, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to set this to uh, back to white. Should be cool. And so to test that out, I'm just going to hit play. And you can see when we look at it, red white, red, white, and that's whenever we looked. Cool, so just one more thing. Uh, we're just going to set up the activate. Uh, so for here, it's really simple. I'm just going to grab a test thing of say uh, left mouse button down and then on pressed, I'm just going to grab the object we're looking at and just call um, activate. Easy done. And to visualize that in the cube, I'm just going to grab this uh, two nodes again. I'm just going to duplicate them. And you can do whatever you want here. Um, the color is just an easy visual rep representation. Um, I'm just going to grab a random unit vector, so a, a random color basically. And so if I play again, we can see red, white, so focus, blur, and then activate it will create a random color for the cube. Cool. Seems to be all good. Um, so this is the first video on the traces. Uh, the next video will be on uh, using the dot product for sort of a um, assisted um, activation. It's pretty cool. It's more math heavy, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to put these source files up for download uh, if you want to just grab them and not really follow along. Um, but yeah, that's this one. Thanks for watching.